So the newer iPhones now support 7.5 watt Qi charging, which is great, right? It's 2.5 watts higher than what it was before, but still half as fast as Qi charging for some of the newer Android devices with Quick Charge 3.0. Now I'm just gonna talk about charging on the iPhone. And I guess the question I wanted to answer for myself for this video was, can I justify spending an extra $70 on a 7.5 watt Qi charger? From my perspective, no, it doesn't. I say this when compared with all the other chargers I've used, 7.5 watt Qi charging sits here. In the next few minutes, I'll show you what I discovered when I compared charge rates against a 5 watt speaking Qi charger, the regular Apple 5 watt Apple iPhone charger, a 29 watt MacBook charger, an 87 watt MacBook Pro charger, and I'm gonna compare against all these other fast charge compatible pucks. So let's get started. Real usage, real reviews. Mobile reviews, a dot ca. At Mobile Reviews, eh? Monty and I base all our videos on actual usage. So when it comes to Qi charging videos, well, we spent a lot of time charging and discharging all of our stupid iPhones. I pretty much started this video uh, middle of January and now it's almost the middle of April. So it's been three months to finally finish this video. It's just been, oh, so frustrating when it takes so long. With 7.5 watt charger, Apple turned that feature on in iOS 11.2. When the iPhone 10 and 8 were first announced, they were only capable of being charged at the base rate of five watts, which is bare minimum and incredibly slow. Now we knew that Apple was gonna release 7.5 watt charging during release. And so if you bought one that wasn't compatible, that, that just kind of sucks. Uh, so how much better is the 7.5 watt charging over the normal five watt charger? Now to answer this question, I ran several discharge cycles between my favorite Qi charger, the Spigen F300W and the Anchor 7.5 watt Anchor Power Wave charger. There's these two products have a design feature that I really like that make it stand out over the other uh, Qi products that I've used. I'll elaborate in a minute. Now it almost took 15,000 seconds for the Spigen Qi charger to bring my iPhone 10 from 10 to 100%. It only took the Anchor 7.5 watts 10 1,500 seconds. Now, these numbers kind of make sense to me as 7.5 watts is 150% of five watts, but let that sink in. 15,000 seconds is a little over four hours for the speaking charger uh, and almost three hours for the anchor charger. The only time in my day-to-day -day life where I can leave my iPhone in one location for three to four hours at a time is when I sleep. For me, it's almost impossible for me to get a decent charge from Qi charging during the day and I work mostly from home. For example, I left my iPhone for 30 minutes on the PowerWave charger for lunch and it charged my device from six to 26%. That might get me through another four hours of heavy usage and I'd be wary about my device's battery level after supper. If I relied solely on the charger, I ended up becoming that friend who's always asking to borrow someone else's charger on the road. Another example where Qi charging isn't that useful would be in my car. I rarely drive more than 10 to 15 minutes on any given trip. So the amount of charge that I'm gonna get through a Qi charging is gonna be tiny. So if you're finding this video informative and useful, consider getting any sort of tech or anything through uh, my Amazon links. It doesn't necessarily have to be the thing that I've linked to. As long as you use my Amazon link to go to Amazon, I'll get a small uh, commission for helping you, you know, find stuff to do, find stuff to buy. Um, and this video was not sponsored by any of these companies. So I've basically spent hundreds of dollars on Qi chargers in order to answer the question, well, is 7.5 watt Qi charging worth it? That's a really expensive video. Yikes. So how does the seven and a half watt charger compare against the standard charger that comes with the iPhone? Well, from my test, there was almost no difference. Well, a six minute difference uh, was shown, uh, which is kind of insignificant when you consider that it still takes three hours to charge uh, the iPhone 10 from full for both chargers. Let that sink in. You could spend an extra $70 on this product and it will charge basically just as fast as the uh, free charger that comes with the uh, iPhone. This doesn't make any sense to me because Qi charger doesn't really offer me that much more freedom than my hardwired charging. The only reason why I'm showing you the speed and anchor products is because of the stand feature. I like being able to see my device on my desk and it's easier to keep track of when compared to the flat disc designs. I'm a very messy person, so you know I lose my iPhone and my Qi charger on my desk. But I could save myself a bit of money by spending only $5 on a cheap stand and get the same general functionality in terms of charging with the default charger. On top of this annoyance is the fact that Qi wireless charging 
isn't as wireless as we all think it should be, as your device still needs to be physically touching the charger. If Wi-Fi was as wireless as Qi charging, I'd have to have one of my devices within five millimeters of the router in order for me to use Wi-Fi. If my cell phone connection was defined in the same manner, I'd have to stand next to a telephone pole or a cell pole in order for me to use my cell connection. Now there's two kicks to the groin that I kind of discovered through this entire process of making this video. And the first one was the charger that comes with this Anchor Power Wave is a Quick Charge 3.0. It charges your device significantly faster than the 7.5 watt Qi charger. You heard me right. The charger that plugs into this Qi charger charges your iPhone faster than the Qi charger. That's what the graph says. The last kick in the groin is the fact that most of these chargers require you to use your device quick charge if it came with one. That won't matter much for iPhone users, but for Android users, that means you have to sacrifice your actual quick charge charger for a slower wireless Qi charger. So how does the 7.5 watt Qi charging compare against the fastest way to charge your iPhone, which is to use a laptop charger? With a 29 watt charger, it only takes two hours to charge your iPhone 10 uh, from 10% to full, which is a full hour shorter than the seven and a half watt charger. If you're looking for a better way to charge your iPhone, just consider taking the $70 you'd spend on the Qi charger and buy yourself one of these $50 MacBook chargers. The fast charging feature from zero to 50% in 30 minutes is quite handy. Going back to my lunch example, if I can get 50% in 30 minutes, that would easily last me past supper for the day. I will note that you will need to get a USB 3 to lightning cable, which is about 20 bucks. So, you know, it all kind of works out the same and you get a way better charging experience. If you're wondering if you use a non-branded Apple cable and get the same charge rates, this ESR cable uh, worked quite well and the difference between charge times was negligible. Just make sure that everything you get is Apple MiFi certified because if you think $10 cables at the gas stations are a good deal, well, you definitely to watch this video. So how about the 87 watt charger? Is it the fastest of the bunch? It actually isn't. Um, it charges at the same rate as the 29 watt charger, despite having more than double the potential wattage. Now this may seem odd, but these higher wattage chargers are based on the USB PD power distribution specification, which allows the device to pull in the maximum power it can handle. So if you've got more power than it can handle, it well, the device isn't going to take any of it. How does the specifically stated seven and a half watt anchor power wave charger compare against the Saiteki and Pictech charger when it comes to charging your iPhone wirelessly? And all these products are about half the price of the power wave and the charge speeds are within 10% of one another. Neat fact, I used four different cables through this entire testing phase and different cables actually have different charging rates, which I guess isn't that surprising, but still good to note. The fastest one of this group was this no-name branded cable. I have no idea where I got it from, but it was about 10 minutes quicker on average than every other one, every other cable shown here. So how does this seven and a half watt anchor power wave compare against some of the more expensive products from Mophie and Belkin, like the ones you would get at the Apple store? They're almost identical in terms of charge speed, surprisingly. The biggest difference in my opinion is the general design. Being able to see the notifications on my iPhone while I work at my desk is way handier than the stupid flat top design of these average, expensive, overpriced Qi chargers. Now at the end of the day, I've been using Qi charging on and off for about three, four years now. And it is still like, this is my serious attempt at using Qi charger in my everyday life. And it's still not there. And my biggest gripe with this technology is that it's not fast. It needs to be faster. It needs to charge your devices faster. And yeah, like I don't mind paying the $70, but if this thing can charge my iPhone just as fast as my tiny dinky charger, I might as well just spend the $70, get a USB-C to lightning cable and a 29 watt MacBook charger. You, I'd be way better off with that, as I mentioned before, than buying this. So that's all I got. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down there. Um, if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe. That's all I got. Right, Monty? He's a ripe smelling dog.